What's up, y'all? So, <clears throat> so if you're like me, right, you're an A7S3 owner, uh, but you don't want to use Final Cut Pro because you actually want an editing system that's better and is going to make you, you know, a way better colorage than you use DaVinci Resolve. Like, this, this is just a fact. But the problem is with DaVinci Resolve, it does not accept ProRes RAW. So, but I have a solution, right? That's the whole point in this video. So we're going to go over the four things that you need to be able to use RAW in DaVinci Resolve. Now, there's some things I kind of want to go over. Number one, uh, unlike Final Cut Pro, you still don't get like ISO changes and stuff like that. A lot of this is really going to like the, the most that you're going to be getting out of this RAW codec is obviously like, you know, DaVinci Resolve is going to read as a 16-bit file. Number two, you're going to be able to change white balance, exposure, lift shadows, gains, and all. You're going to get those controls, but you do not get ISO control. So, you know, if that's something that big that you need, then, you know, obviously you need to look somewhere else because... You should know how to expose your shot well in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Like, you shouldn't need to change your ISO that much if you expose it correctly the first time. This is kind of just giving you more control and flexibility in post and kind of giving you the best image, you know what I'm saying, as possible. So, what do you need to even get this done, right? You need four things. And also, for my OGs, I already know the drill, man. Go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. Help your boy get his numbers up. We almost 1,800 subs. Let's keep going. I appreciate y'all. Number one, obviously, you should know this already, but you're going to need an A7S 3 with the Ninja V recorder, which you know, we have right here. But I feel like if you're watching this video, you knew that already. Now, in regards to having Ninja, the Ninja V, we need to talk about the exposure. Now, a lot of videos you're gonna see is gonna tell you to expose in PQ because you're, not gonna, you're gonna get the maximum style to dynamic range, blah, 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 blah. Now, for me, yes, I do see that PQ does expose it well, but so does the Phantom LUT that I use as well. So, you know, here, so we go down a LUT, so you, you can do PQ, right? Now, once you do PQ, as you can see, you can see that it still works, obviously, right? It, it, it exposed correctly. But what I've noticed is with the LUT that I use, to me, it gives you like a little bit more of an accurate representation the Phantom Lust for the A7S III. Uh, I loaded that LUT on here, and I don't really see like that much of a huge of a difference between PQ and a LUT. But to me, it's just the LUT just has more of like a like a gamma assist curve, if you will, and the PQ doesn't. So I say from what I've seen, you can either use PQ or the the the, the Phantom LUT A7S III, like the neutral LUT. It works just the same. But what I'm noticing, you're not losing any stops of dynamic range by using that. Number two, you're actually gonna need this app that you download from the app store. Now, unfortunately, if you're a Windows user, this may not work for you. I don't think this is on a you know a Windows store or you can download this anywhere. But the raw converter app, which is an app, so it's like around like a hundred bucks now. You have to use that to actually convert your ProRes raw files into Cinema DNG files, right? So technically, we're not using ProRes raw with DaVinci Resolve. We're using Cinema DNG and just converting it, which at whichever compression ratio you see fit. Now, there's a caveat with owning this app, right? Um, the files are big as shit, okay? There's just no way around that. So you have lost list, three to one, five to one, seven to one, and you actually have no compression. Um, you know what I'm saying? For most of what we're doing, most of us can use three to one and be perfectly fine. Like, I really don't see us needing to have, like, you know, just, like, lost list and, and no compression at all. Like, trust me, you just don't want that much of a headache of a size. And I would say with this app, now for me, I do have a Mac Studio. For me, I would say the conversion is actually pretty quick. I haven't noticed it sitting here like taking a whole bunch of time. So if you do have like a pretty decent computer, decent GPU, I'll say anything like M1 and up, um, even from like a Mac Mini, the conversion process actually doesn't take that long at all. And plus, you still do have your original files that you recorded internally in your camera. If you wanted to start a grid, you can. So then once you get it over, you just have even more flexibility. After you have them pay like a hundred bucks for the app or whatever, right? Cause it's not free. The, the app is like kind of, it's up there, but you unlock it like another feature in your camera in which, you know, if you was, if you wanted a camera with raw capability, but you use DaVinci Resolve and like you think about like a Canon camera, you have to do all that now. You know what I'm saying? Like you, now your camera, you've unlocked the feature in your camera to be able to use it with the desired editor of your choice. Again, if you want to be a better colorist, you're going to use DaVinci Resolve. I don't know why you say use Premiere Pro at this point. Now, as far as number three, you're going to definitely need hard drive space. Like I said, like I was saying previously, it does take up a lot of space. Actually, it takes up a shit ton of space. So that's something to be mindful of. This is not something i would do for every project like if you're shooting like an hour to two hour long documentary or you know what i'm saying we're gonna say some shit like for uh you know this long ass interviews i would not recommend this but if you shoot like a music video kind of like some one-off social media ad shit like that sure have fun but you know just keep in mind storage is a thing so you know be mindful of that now, number four, obviously you need to venture resolve, and this is kind of where we get into the breakdown of like the correct settings that you should have. Now, keep, also with this being said, these settings is not just like for raw. This setting, if if you own the Sony A7S III, these are the settings that you should be importing your footage in anyway. And I got this from the GOAT himself, the colorist that like, yo, he has changed the way I look at color. So I mean, Cullen Kelly. If you're not familiar with Cullen Kelly, subscribe to Cullen Kelly. If you're gonna be a better colorist, I have become a it's like a night and day difference on how my color has gotten. Now, typically I use dual display, but just for the sake of this video, I got to put it on, you know what I'm saying? Um, 
you know, one display just so you can see like where the files are coming in at. But nonetheless, I already have my files in Dropbox. So you're gonna actually you just in the thing is when you use the Rock Over the app, you can tell the you can tell you can tell the storage to go like you can you can send your files whatever. Just select the folder that you want. Miles is still in Dropbox. Uh, so I was kind of show you. I just want to show you what they look like. So they're gonna kind of look like this. It's, as you can see, like they're just it's like a lot of DNG type of files because like the way it's breaking enough for the raw. Like the way the way the raw is being interpreted is like it's almost kind of like an all eye codec. Like they're giving you almost down like frame by frame by frame with cinema DNG from what I'm seeing. So like I said, the files are gonna be humongous. But nonetheless, you just take those, you drop them in here, and then they're gonna be placed like how they should be. You know, they're not gonna be broken up in individual files, right? Like as you can see, um, it is raw, and then on top of that, we go to the metadata. It is indeed 16 bit to let us know that we do have raw. I don't know. I have to throw this in here. That's what she said. Now, the main important thing about this is the correct settings. This really makes a difference, okay? We're gonna go down to the gear icon wheel, and then we're gonna go to color management. Now, these are the settings that you should have. I'm gonna pause right here so you can take a little picture. Okay, got it. Now, let's just say, for example, when my homeboy, he was having a similar issue and he and he didn't have the correct output DP, uh, the DRT. So let me show you all what happened if you had the wrong settings, right? So if you let's just say if you have your output DRT on like on none, it's not gonna interpret your it's not gonna interpret your footage correctly. Like and as you can see, like these highlights are kind of high. The footage just like it just looks off. It looks wrong. Uh let's see if we go somewhere else. Like these highlights that clip. So you definitely want to make sure your settings are exactly like mine. So you have luminous mapping, ten thousand nits. Um yeah, if you know, we can get into like this other stuff later. So this is not important. But as far as uh, how you interpret this footage, these are the correct settings that you need. You hit save and boom, as you can see, my highlights are back recovered. Let's actually go to we're going to say like a raw clip. So let's go find a raw clip. All right. And just throw one on the timeline. So we'll throw this one on and then we'll throw uh, something with her faces in it. Uh, OK, now. Uh, in my timeline color space, you know, I have a Kodak LED on, so I'm going to turn that on just so you can get the the, the entire look of it. Um, but this is the raw file, right? This is this is how it's going to look in raw. And so it looks just like SLR3. That's why I see it's going to use a regular LED. It, you should be able to still have the same type of exposure. It shouldn't matter. And then we go to the camera raw tab. You're going to make sure you go down to decode using clip. And then all your settings will open up where you want to change the color temp. The tint, exposure, highlights, all that. You can select highlight recovery, but if it's not built in, so you're not going to get it anyway. But other than that, like I said, this is really for if you really want to just have more flexibility in your grade. You're not going to get, like I said, the ISO button and all that. But being able to change the color temp, uh, like fluidly and like in the raw tab itself, being, hey, being able to capture the, the raw information coming from the sensor and then being able to have like a little bit more aspect ratio when you're shooting because it's bigger than 38, it's bigger, the pixels are bigger than 38 for about 2160 when you're shooting in raw. So, you know, this, this is something that's to keep in mind when you are using this raw Kodak. Now, with that being said, what did we learn? We learned that, yes, it is possible to use raw end of entry resolve now. It's going to be um, placed in Cinema DNG. You don't get all the benefits of ProRes RAW that you would in Final Cut, but again, you do get the actual bit depth itself. So just being able, if you have a if you have a client who says, "Hey, can we shoot this in RAW?" and you use DaVinci Resolve, you can easily say yes. Yes, I can. So with that being said, man, I appreciate y'all for watching. I hope y'all learned something. If you all kind of want to go, if you all are interested in me doing like a color, like a color breakdown of how I color my videos now, please let me know down in the comments below. And I de like, I'm eager to show you all this. So just let me know. I have no problem doing that. And if you haven't yet, make sure you follow me everywhere at Brooks Media. That's Brooks Media with two S's. If you ain't at the S, you ain't spelling it right. It's your boy Sean B and I'm out. Deuces.